What is up everyone, my name is Jack Southall, back again with another video and welcome to my WWE Monday Night Raw review for March the 21st, 2016 and uh, man, this, this was a bad show in my opinion, you know, it wasn't, you know, the worst thing to ever happen to professional wrestling or anything, it was just bad show and when you are two weeks away from your biggest show of the year and quite possibly the biggest show in the company's history with you know 105,000 people coming to your event you need to up your game and I don't think WWE is doing that hopefully in, in next week's episode of Raw we um, see the WWE step up the game and give us a really really good Raw to get us really hooked into Wrestlemania um, but as for right now nothing really do it so I'm just gonna quickly go over the show because to be honest it wasn't really that amazing so um, we opened up the show with Stephanie McMahon surprise surprise and um, she pretty much you know puts over her husband and you know says how shit Roman Reigns is and um, Roman Reigns then comes out crowd boos the crap out of him and um, he pretty much comes out there and um, pretty much says I want a championship match at Wrestlemania and um, all that stuff and um, the crowd is just heckling the shit out of him at this point and that he asks the people the real reason Triple H is here because he's scared and um, all that stuff and Reigns pretty much says now I'm the authority tosses the microphone and walks off so not something too crazy from Roman Reigns which is good he didn't say anything about Jack and the Beanstalk or you know suffer and suck a tash son um, which was silly, um, but you know, he was straight to the point, which is pretty good. You know, Roman Reigns was alright on this show tonight, I will give him that, but the crowd, man, they weren't having any of him, man, just wasn't having any of it. Um, then we get AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, and I'll tell you something, um, the promo was only 10 minutes long which is pretty short for Raw standards. But um, the match between AJ Styles and Kevin Owens was really, really friggin' good. Um, lots of cool stuff happened in this. Um, one spot I will remember was um, uh, Kevin Owens doing the five-star frog splash from the top. I thought that was really cool. And um, I think... AJ went for the outside, he was going to do like a springboard kind of thing, and then Jericho comes out and uh, mocks the AJ Styles chance, um, but then Styles gets blindsided, um, and Owens hits a roll up for the win, Styles is not happy, and then Owens grabs his icy belt, um, grabs the microphone, holds up the title, everyone's gone, and that this is the Kevin Owens show, he's done with Styles, and that in 13 days... He wants to find out who he's going to face at WrestleMania for his Intercontinental title and he's ready for KO Mania and all that. And then Dolph Ziggler's music hits and you can just hear a Ugh! across the entire internet because because Ziggler versus Owens again? Come on. But no, I we knew we weren't going to get that. And um, Ziggler says whatever you want to call it, KO Mania, Botchamania, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, that one's for you, Matthew. And pretty much he says he deserves an IC title match and all that. And he was the one who gave uh, Triple H a beating last week because he faced Triple H in a match. And then Sami Zayn comes out to a good reception. And um, Zayn says he's been waiting a long time to get his hands on Kevin Owens. Couldn't think of a better time and place to do than the IC title mania. Miz then comes out and says he has to wait a lot longer calls him the skinny Seth Rogen. And that um, he begins walking out. And that in the interest of fairness, Owens decides you guys will have a triple threat match from um, number one contenders match, winner faces me for the IC title. So, pretty cool thing by Kevin Owens. Uh, good matchmaking, buddy. And um, right after that, we get um, Dean Ambrose in like a pub somewhere, just, you know, chilling, uh, thinking about like Brock Lesnar and how he's going to beat him at WrestleMania. And then out of nowhere, Terry Funk decides to show off. He's been talking to him and Funk talks about Ambrose is all kinds of crazy, like a fox in a hen house or whatever, and that he's the best in the country and he had a son or a daughter. He'd want it to be Ambrose. Then he gives him a chainsaw and it's like, you would want to use this, mate, which is just fucking crazy. What's up with these hardcore legends giving him, like, bloody weapons? It's like the Sandman going to give him, like, a beer and a cigarette. Like, what's going on? Um, and then Ambrose just fires up the chainsaw and cuts the table in half and the crap and the people inside the tavern just fuck off and scream and all that which is pretty cool. I'm liking how Dean Ambrose is booked right now going into his match against Brock Lesnar. He looks 
pretty fucking bad. It's safe to say he might be the most over guy in the company right now. I'm not really sure because, let's just face it, no one likes fucking Roman Reigns at the moment. Um, but, yeah, Ambrose is doing some awesome shit right now and I'm very happy for him and I hope him and Lesnar tear that goddamn house down. Then we get backstage, Stephanie McMahon's texting on her phone, KO walks in and talks about, hey, do you think um, I could make this match? You know, I'm climbing the ladder of success and all that shit. Can you make the triple threat match for me? And Steph's like, all right. And KO's like, all right, cool. So um, then we get a video recap of the return of Shane McMahon. Various um, WWE guys like Austin, Cena, all of them talk about the match and the uh, and how Undertaker is inside Allen so and all that shit. So um, then we get the New Day coming out, and um, a couple of stage hands backstage started um, twerking, which was weird. Um, however, the League of Nations was already in the ring, talking about how they're facing a New Day. L let me just say about the League of Nations, I'm sorry, these guys, they're not clicking with me. I, they can be great athletes, don't get me wrong, King Barrett is great. Um, Del Rio, if you um, book him correctly, can be very awesome, he's a great in-ring talent. WWE does not know how to book him, you know, at all. Lucha Underground did, but not here in WWE. Um, Sheamus, he could be alright, but no one gives a shit about Sheamus. Um, if you've seen my December videos, you'd obviously know why. And, um, who's the other lad? Rusev? Yeah, I like Rusev, but his character's just bland. And they just pretty much talk a bunch of shit about New Day. New Day comes out, and they pretty much, um, pretty much roast, um, all of the members of League of Nations. Um, they all come into the ring, and um, the League of Nations get drop kicked off the apron, start attacking them. New Day takes them down, stands full in the ring. Woods is playing the trombone, and then we get Big E versus Rusev. So the two big muscly dudes come out. Um, Big E ends up getting the win, and um, yeah, the New Day um, continues to rock. Um, as for the tag match or WrestleMania, I guess they had to do something. I mean, why couldn't they save the New Day versus the Dudley Boys? I mean, you could have kept them, like, babyface for a while and have them have, like, a really big feud with the New Day and have them, like, have a massive moment at WrestleMania winning the tag titles. That'd be pretty awesome. But, no, we're getting New Day versus League of Nations. I'm not intrigued by this feud whatsoever. I want New Day to win, um, at WrestleMania. Hopefully they... I've heard rumors they're going to ride in on a unicorn. How the hell are they going to do that? I've got no idea, but... Um, anyway, yeah, New Day wins. New Day rocks, which is always good. Um, then we get a Bray Wyatt promo. Wyatt just says, and Eguos is the chance of us to become born again. And everyone says something, which is pretty cool. Luke Harper said something. Rowan said something. Braun Strowman said he's the god of war watching over him. And offers Dean Ambrose a sacrifice. Wyatt says, run, and all that stuff. And then right afterwards, we get Todd... Chrisley, or from the guy from Chrisley Knows Best, WWE's favorite reality show besides Total Divas. Um, he's in a backstage um, Snickers commercial with Naomi and Alicia Fox. It's pretty fucking horrible. Um, Todd Chrisley, you gave me cancer, mate. Uh, then we get um, Big Show cutting a promo about the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And it says, it's always been my dream to win the Battle Royal, even though I did last year, because fuck the younger talent. And, um, you know, I won it last year, and I'm going to do it again. Let's fucking hope not. And then the social outcasts come out, and Heath Slater rips up Big Show. And that's Mark in the Industry will be the social outcast's largest victim at WrestleMania. And that they're like a Cinderella story. Axel says they're more like Voltron. Seriously, Axel is just crazy. Adam's like, this is serious, and then Big Show's in serious trouble. They decide to beat up um, Big Show. Big Show tries to fight him off, and then Kane comes out to save the day. Put Nova Young Talent, WWE. Good job. Um, and then Big Show and Kane, they like, oh, Big Show's like, oh, give me a hug, buddy. And Kane's like, what the fuck, dude? That's not me. And then right afterwards, Kane and then Kane delivers an absolute shite choke slam off the second rope. Poor Big Show, I don't know how he sold that properly. Um, he set the posts on fire, and I think Kane is probably going to win the Battle Royal, which sucks. I want a new guy to win and maybe build up his career, but who else do we have, really? You know, it's just stupid. And then uh, we find out that Fifth Harmony will perform America the Beautiful. Meh. And that just sums up Fifth Harmony in general. They're just a meh group. Um, we find out Stan the Lariat Hansen 
is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, which is really cool. Um, and then right afterwards, we get Fun Dung Go versus Chris Jericho in a WrestleMania 29 rematch. Where the fuck has Fun Dungo been in the last God knows how many years? Um, they have they have their match, you know, they're going average. And then AJ Styles comes out and gives uh, Jericho a bit of his own medicine, chanting "Why to Jackass," which was pretty cool. Uh, fans chant along with him. Then Jericho gives him a code breaker for the win. Styles angrily stares at Jericho, and um, Jericho immediately gets out of the ring, backs up the ramp. Styles says Jericho is the best in the world at avoiding him, and then he talks about convening all over the world, but he's never been to WrestleMania. Jericho is not happy about this thing the fans have chosen him. Styles says, hey, we want to sell this at WrestleMania? Let's do it. And it'll show Jericho and the world why they chant AJ Styles, and then it doesn't take off. So Styles tries again, and um, just the crowd was dead. Philadelphia was dead, which was weird. Um, anyway, so we get... Kevin Owens, he's going to introduce everyone that's coming out. And he says, all right, coming to the ring. He's the biggest star than anyone in WWE because he has star in his name, Stardust. And we're like, what the fuck is this? And then Owens comes out. Here comes the massive um, high-flying superstar who used to wear a mask, Sin Cara. And I thought, oh, it'd be Sami Zayn. But um, he kind of teased it for a second there because Sami Zayn used to wear a mask as El Generico. Finally, Owens is like, one of the most popular superstars that never got a break. It's Zack Ryder, which I was happy about. My boy Zack Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. You know it. Um, I don't give a shit about Stardust Sin Cara. I'm just happy Zack Ryder's in this match. But um, the match is happening. Sami Zayn, Miz, and Dolph Ziggler is like, what the fuck is this shit? And they beat up everyone. And then Owens runs back stage to Stephanie and KO's like hey what the hell was that about and Stephanie's like well you talked about climbing the ladder of success before well, how about you actually climb a ladder to defend your IC title in a ladder match against six other guys so we're getting a multi-man ladder match yay instead of KO versus Sami Zayn because that makes too much sense you know it's not like we have an Andre the Giant Battle Royal or anything fuck that but, um, yeah, stupid. Just absolutely... Why does this match have to happen? Why? I mean, can't you just fill some more guys up in the Battle Royal or whatever? But, no, we gotta have our multi-man match because fuck you. Um, then Stephanie decides to walk to the garage and, uh, the game is at the car. And then when they, um, decide to leave... The gates roll up, or the fucking garage door opens up, and the big top dog is just standing there. It was fucking hilarious. Passenger door. He runs to the car, drags Triple H out of him, and beats the shit out of him. You know, Stephanie's just screaming, Ah, get off it! Ah! Just fucking crazy. Crowd boos the shit out of him just because it's Roman Reigns, poor fella. Um, so that was pretty cool, I guess. Then we get Natalia versus Charlotte. Um, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks are pretty much bickering with each other during the whole match. Um, Charlotte got the win, and yeah. <laughs> That's all I say about that. Um, and then we get R-True versus Bubba Ray Dudley, and um, we find out the Dudley boys will face the Usos at WrestleMania, and um, they have an alright match. Bubba Ray Dudley gets the win, and um, they decide to double-team R-Truth until Goldust comes out. Um, no one gives a shit. Uh, Dudley boys quickly take him down with the 3D2, I believe. Usos then come out, and uh, and then the Usos hit the super kick, and uh, Usos get the tables, and uh, Devon's on the table, climb the opposite corner. Bubba Ray grabs Devon, and they piss off. And then we find out we get a massive announcement from Vinny Mac. He comes out. And um, he decides to make a new stipulation to the Undertaker versus Shane McMahon match. And that is, if the Undertaker loses, it will be his last WrestleMania. What does that mean, though? Let's just think about it. He never said retirement. So, could it be he can perform at every other event other than WrestleMania? Or maybe this is it. After this WrestleMania, he's done. He's gone. He's out of here. And, um, yeah, this is going to be very shocking. Like, if Shane does beat Undertaker, 
you know, he'll be the runner of Raw, so could he just hire him back? I don't know. Um, very confusing, but um, yeah, it's like Undertaker's going to have to win, otherwise I guess his career's over. It kind of seems like that. But um, we'll find out next week. They might have some more um, stuff about it in the next episode. Um, anyway, in our main event, we've got Dean Ambrose versus Braun Strowman. Very meh match. No one gave a shit. Um, Ambrose then avoided a shoulder block in the corner. Hits it to him with the chair. Gets disqualified. Ambrose unloads on Strowman. He um, hits a rebound clothesline. Hits a dirty deed. Ambrose gets out of the ring. Stares at Paul Heyman, who was on commentary. And that's how we end the show. So... Yeah, this show made me a lot less excited for uh, WrestleMania, which is a shame. There was some stuff that did interest me, like um, the Vince McMahon announcing Undertaker might retire at WrestleMania. Um, a lot of things. Apparently, Luke Harper got injured. Are you fucking kidding me? Because if there's one thing the WWE needs right now, it's more injuries. I mean, for fuck's sake... What is going on with WWE? Who has put something in the water fountain? Seriously, it's fucked up. Please, wrestlers, do your best to keep yourself safe. Um, but anyway, how I rate this Raw, it was pretty pfft, kind of Raw, really. Nothing exciting happened. Philadelphia was dead during the entire show, except when Roman Reigns came out when they booed the living shit out of him, who's supposed to be the big top baby face. Which he obviously isn't. So, um, but he was alright tonight on Raw. I will say that. But, um, yeah, I'm just going to wrap this video up here. I hope you have enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like if you did. Comment down below your thoughts on Raw. Um, if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. Twitter and Instagram is at JackamanLaw31 if you want to check me out there. Thank you so much for watching and I am out in 3, 2, 1.